You're listening to Together NJ, the podcast that's here to bring some joy into your day. Us resilient New Jersey folks keep finding ways to make things better for friends, neighbors, and even strangers during this time of crisis. NJ.com journalists are here to tell those stories of showing love in big and small ways. The Together NJ Project is presented by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey. It's something that's happened to all of us. At your exact time of need, a total stranger comes through in a pinch. And they're your angel for a minute, but then they're gone before you can really say thank you. The good deed can be something simple, like helping change a flat tire, or something huge, like the moment from today's story. Joe Wojcicki, the assistant director of patient experience at Clara Moss Medical Center, was that special stranger for Lisa Molinari. With the help of FaceTime, Joe made sure that Lisa and her family could share their final words with their brother before he died of COVID-19. It was a simple moment that meant everything to Lisa. So she wanted to reconnect and properly thank Joe, and that's where we stepped in. I'm Jessica Remo, a reporter and columnist for NJ Advanced Media, and I'm here with video producer Natalie Patterson, who got to be part of this very special reunion. This was something truly special. It was also extremely gut-wrenching to learn about. So uh, originally, NJ.com's Avalon Zappo was the reporter uh, writing up the story. Uh, She had reached out asking for some help with the video aspect of the, you know, setting up the video call and connecting the family with Joe on the call and uh, ended up witnessing something I will definitely never forget. I can only imagine that had to be a really intense call to be part of. It was. It was such an emotionally charged day. It was right after Dr. Molinari, better known to his family, of course, as Frankie, uh, the day after he was laid to rest. And wow. uh, Joe was just very emotional talking about what he's been doing for families who can't come to the hospital. Uh, Lisa was emotional, of course, talking about the loss of her brother. And then there were these just beautiful moments where both of them were making each other smile and, and just bonding in, in such mm-hmm. an extraordinary way. Um, these healthcare workers are just going so far beyond. Mm-hmm you know, for these families, it it triggered every emotion. For sure. A family lost a loved one, and that's awful. Um, But what this story highlights is the best of humanity. It's a story about kindness, uh, compassion. So, Natalie, tell us more. A New Jersey hospital worker changed Lisa Molinari and her siblings' lives forever. Thank God for Joe. I just keep saying that. I mean, it's, it's just unbelievable. That's Lisa talking about Joe Wojcicki, the assistant director of patient experience at Clara Moss Medical Center in Belleville, New Jersey. Joe made sure that Lisa and her family could say goodbye to her brother dying of COVID-19. It was my pleasure. You know, I've been working here at the hospital for about 15 years, and I've, I've played the role as, as a patient representative in the patient experience department. So I do, I do a lot with the patient's family. But that day, you know, when they asked me if I would start doing some FaceTiming so families could connect, it, I felt like I was, I was there for a reason. And, and thank God I was. 70-year-old Dr. Francis Molinari had been treating coronavirus patients at a field hospital until a week before he was hospitalized for COVID-19. He was admitted to the hospital on March 29th. To his family, he was better known as Frankie. He was the older brother of four, four of us, and there's a 20-year span between my youngest sister and my oldest brother. So we were all, we all looked up to the next sibling, um, and Frankie was, he was like always in our lives as somebody who we looked up to. He was our protector. He always had a great sense of humor. He was a big brother that, that all of us admired. And um, whenever we got together, um, the laughter and, and the, the singing and, and, you know, being, being a real family was what it was all about, and, and Frankie was, was the leader of that. So um, he was a brother that we loved and will miss him dearly. He um, had a wife and a daughter. Um, he, was a, he was a husband and a father, and he was a, he was a doctor, and he loved, he loved what he did. So he was, just, he was just a guy who was full of life, um, but mostly he was my brother. 
By April 5th, Frankie was on a ventilator in room number 1315 in Clara Moss. His symptoms grew worse. Lisa and her siblings had no way of visiting or even speaking to their brother until Joe stepped in to help. Joe organized a video call for the siblings from their brother's hospital room. They didn't know it at the time, but it would be the last time they got to speak to Frankie. What Joe actually did before he went into the room was he said, you know what, what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to put the phone by Frankie's head and I'm going to walk out for 20 minutes and then I'll come back in when you guys are ready. We were just taking our turns and it, and it is hard because these are very private um, conversations that you're having. It's that, that final conversation. Um, we feel like he could hear us um, and th- that gives us some sense of comfort. Dr. Molinari died four days later. Through her grief, Lisa was compelled to thank Joe for the opportunity to say some final words to her brother. The day after Dr. Molinari was laid to rest, Lisa made this call to thank Joe for his kindness. You're putting your life at risk every day, and and we know that. um, But you're also providing a service that that you have no idea how it touches our lives. So... um, you know, could not thank you enough. And, and please know how much we all appreciate that. Thank you. I, I've, I just explained that I did five already this morning. And, and two out of the five, the patients were extremely critical. And knowing that the families had the last moments to be on a virtual or a, a video conferencing with their loved ones, and they had the opportunity to say goodbye. And the, the, last, the last one, their pastor said a prayer together, and it was, there wasn't a dry eye in the room, because there was, the whole team was in the room, and it's, it's, it's worth a million dollars what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and that feeling of isolation um, is it's just overwhelming. I mean, that on top of everything else from the, from the medical perspective, but to have at least some connection and the connection that you gave us, um, my family is forever grateful and you have no idea what that's done for us. So we want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, it was my pleasure that day, Um, especially after realizing the patient and I had a connection as well. I've known him for many years working here at the hospital. He was a good man, very, very good man. I was honored to do that. You see him in a, in a different way. Like to us, he was just our, our silly brother. Um, but <laughs> but we, we do understand that he was, you know, well-loved and well-respected. And, and um, you know, I, I, I think um, the hospital will miss him. He'll, he'll you know, I've, I've heard from patients I, I, you know, they've connected with me through Facebook. Um, I, I've heard from a lot of his colleagues. It's, it's funny to, to, it's, it's odd to see that in a different way. Um, but, you know, if you guys loved him as much as, as we did, then, then he's, lived a, he's lived a full and rich life. So, we, you know, we're thankful for that. As Joe was speaking to Lisa, he was preparing to organize more video calls for other families who desperately wanted to speak with their loved ones with COVID-19. A few times throughout the call, you could hear the emotional toll all of this has taken on Joe. My son came back from being deployed in the Marine Corps, and that's what I think of every time I'm holding the iPad and the person says, I love you. I think of every time we leave each other's company, we say it, and he says, Dad, if we don't, We're not promised tomorrow. I'm going to tell you I love you every day. Lisa and her siblings hope to hold a celebration of life for Frankie once the pandemic is over and they can again be together. They will forever be grateful to Joe. For NJ.com, I'm Natalie Patterson. Thanks for listening. If you like the show, please rate and review it on Apple Podcasts. Find more of these lovely stories and tell us yours at nj.com slash togethernj. If you're enjoying Together NJ, one way to support us is to purchase a digital subscription. Visit nj.com slash supporter to learn more.